Good news, everybody. Checks worth around $1,500 are now going out to eligible people across the nation. Over 20 states and cities have agreed to send out brand new relief payments for residents that are experiencing financial hardships. Chuck Schumer has also been outspoken on the issue, agreeing that the president is has the power to enact student loan forgiveness. Do you believe that President Biden will enact student loan forgiveness, everybody? Tell me in the comments. To extend this way beyond December 31st, many of us would like to make it permanent, but we're gonna extend it. It will be extended for sure for a very significant amount of time, and we'll see if we can get the permanence uh, that we are fighting for. So this is very, very important for everybody. And I just wanna repeat, because it's important, if you regularly file taxes and you filed your 2020 taxes, you're going to get the money. And by the way, what we arranged to do is have it come in monthly payments. Originally, it was going to be a check at the end of the year. But Let's remember, folks, that the Earned Income Tax Credit is one of the largest tax credits you can receive every year, but often overlooked come tax time. Come tax time. The credit is intended for low to moderate income families to provide financial relief and allow for large refunds for the number of family members. And the Earned Income Tax Credit has been called the most effective anti-poverty program, with about 20 million households receiving it in 2019. The program was first created under the former President Gerald Ford and is designed to reward work and has been credited with lifting more than 5 million people above the poverty line. Unlike many tax credits, we can only reduce the income tax a person. The income tax a person pays to zero, the Earned Income Tax Credit is refundable. That means it puts money in workers' pockets even if they don't have any tax liability. The IRS claims that one, in that one in five eligible taxpayers do not claim the credit and miss out on money that they're entitled to every single year. The earned income tax credit is only available for those who file a tax return every year. However, the rules have changed this year, and the earned income tax credit is worth as much as $6,728 for a family of three. With a family of three or more children, that's up to $1,500 for taxpayers who do not have a qualifying child. In order to be eligible to claim the earned income tax credit, you must have worked and earned income under $51,000. The IRS has also scraped prior year's age limits for the earned income tax credit. Previously, only workers ages 25 to 64 could claim it. In this tax season, any worker 19 or older who meets the income guidelines can qualify for the credit, as well as 18-year-olds. And everybody, it's important to remember that taxpayers should not have to pay anything to claim the credit. Anyone whose income is low enough to qualify is also entitled to file their tax returns for free. As the federal government continues to send out federal stimulus money, many states have also stepped up to send out a fourth stimulus check for their state. States are currently preparing more stimulus payments. In the state of New York, for instance, a stimulus fund worth about $2 billion called the Excluded Workers Fund has been approved to help undocumented workers who are unable to collect previous federal stimulus checks. So uh, the executive order the president will release today is in exactly that direction, which is we need a comprehensive all of government framework to address the emerging risks and opportunities uh, that digital assets pose. And uh, the financial innovation underlying and the technological innovation underlying this boom uh, has a lot of potential benefit, but the risks and the costs are increasingly becoming apparent, and we need a 21st century government structure to actually address this. So a lot of what we're doing here with this executive order is putting in place a framework to work across agencies of government, including independent agencies like the SEC and the Fed that have an important role to play and put urgency and purpose around the core areas that we see as risks. Uh, part of the early take about uh, the EO has been that the U.S. wants to maintain a so-called lead in crypto technology. Is that a fair assessment? And has that even been ex accentuated uh, by what's happened uh, in Eastern Europe the last 14 days? Absolutely. The geopolitical instability and the challenges we're seeing uh, just underscore the importance of the United States being at the front end of leading in uh, technology development and in setting common rules and standards internationally. Uh, that's a role that the United States has traditionally played in international finance. Uh, it's a both an important stability for the global economy, but it's important for U.S. economic leadership and U.S. national security uh, leadership. And so we have to continue to do that. There's a number of steps we need to do uh, to make sure that we're at that forefront, both in terms of building our own technological capacity and also accelerating our investigation and study of things like a central bank digital currency, uh, which are important factors in this whole conversation.
Brian, obviously this is going to be a, a broad-ranging effort and covering all aspects of, uh, of this new world. But uh, is the energy usage of Bitcoin mining at all an element of it at a time when we're kind of wondering about uh, being more efficient in terms of how we use energy and what we pay for it? Absolutely. As we identify in the executive order, there are a number of policy priorities and risks that we need to uh, mitigate here. First and foremost is consumer protection and investor protection. From Oklahoma is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to thank uh, my very good friend, the distinguished gentleman from Massachusetts, Chairman McGovern, for yielding me the customary 30 minutes, and I yield myself such time as I may consume. Today's rule covers three items. The first item is a bill to ban imports of Russian oil into the United States and to impose additional sanctions following Russia's unprovoked and unjust invasion of Ukraine. Madam Speaker, although I will be supporting this bill, I cannot help but feel that this is a half measure and a missed opportunity to exhibit unified support on immediate steps to confront Putin's evil regime. Yesterday, Senators Wyden and uh, Crapo introduced a much stronger bill, one that was negotiated over the weekend by Republicans and Democrats in both the House and the Senate. But rather than taking yes for an answer, the majority instead put forward a weaker bill, one that's watered down and leaves loopholes wide enough to drive a tanker through. Banning Russian oil imports in the wake of Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine should be an obvious no-brainer just as it ought to be a no-brainer for the president to reverse his misguided policies and unleash development of America's own energy sources. But instead of doing so, the Biden administration continues to discourage domestic oil and gas production and is asking every other oil producer in the world to make up the difference. Instead of encouraging our own domestic sources of energy, which could meet our needs, critically supply our allies, and strengthen American energy independence, President Biden has instead taken steps like unilaterally canceling the Keystone XL pipeline, imposing a ban on new oil and gas uh, exploration and leasing on federal lands, and telling hardworking Americans who are struggling to buy uh, expensive gasoline to instead go buy more expensive electric vehicles. Failing to develop America's energy resources is a missed opportunity, Madam Speaker, just like this bill. We had a better option. I wish we had taken it. Our second item today is an omnibus appropriations package covering the remainder of the year 2022. And the third is a short-term continuing resolution to ensure continuity of government funding while Congress processes the larger bill. Madam Speaker, it's been a very, very long road to get to this point. But today, the House will act on a bipartisan, bicameral appropriations package. As vice ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, I'm encouraged that we are finally nearing completion of this fundamental function of Congress to provide full year funding.